Hey, this is your host Shane from Radical Rocks. Today I thought I'd do a video just on some of the jewelry that I've made. Um, I've got a lot of projects coming up and very little time. So I was talking to my wife saying, oh, I want to get some content out there. And she had an idea, just show what you've already made. So I thought I would go ahead and do that for you today and give you a little background on some of the stuff and hopefully it'll prove to be some interesting content that uh, we could repost at a later time. So anyway, here's some of the stuff that I've made over the last 10 years. Um, it's real dirty. Uh, I think she wanted me to do this because everything was so tangled that it literally took me a half an hour just to get these pieces out. Actually over, yeah, a good half an hour. So here's just a real common piece of um, material that you can find out in the Mojave Deserts. And um, this was a pre-made um, kind of a, an Asian look to it. Kind of cool. It's on a silver chain. It's filthy. needs cleaned. Here is some uh, real nice... used to be able to collect um, a lot of this gym quality... Um, Chrysocolla. This is a piece that I ground and polished into this cabochon. Uh, it's freehand and that's the way it turned out. And I did the silversmithing on this and again it's real dirty. I just took some twist uh, square wire and twisted it, soldered it on a back plate, took a little piece of silver, wrapped it around like so to make the bezel. Real simple. Um, really um, highlights the piece that's on there. There is an epoxy on the back. Really the epoxy is probably holding the stone on there more than anything else. But um, you can see that's a real, real pretty piece. Let's see if I can tune into it a little better. I have a light in front of me but it doesn't seem to be showing it. Oh, my phone is messing up now. Sorry about that. Um, Here's a piece I bought. It's just an anamite. It's polished on one side. You see these a lot at the rock and gym shows. Just to have something different. Here's a piece I um, actually put together. Let's see if I can get this to... I guess it doesn't back out once you uh, go forward. It kind of wants to stay where it's at. Darn. Okay. So this piece is... Um, it's a locket. And there's a picture of my wife's kitty cat, Tangi, and I put this together for her just as a memento. And um, there's some of the kitty cat's fur right there in the back. So it's got a window on either side. I just got that on Amazon with the big chain. It's more for hanging on a, a decoration or something, you know, than something to wear. Okay. I went to Israel a few years ago for a couple weeks. Quite a fantastic trip. If you've never gone to Israel, I highly advise you do that. Um, wonderful country. They definitely are the most, there's the most freedom there um, from any other country. They have freedom of religion. They have, um, you know, women are treated equally there. Um, there's rights for, for every type of viewpoint there. Um, unlike anywhere else in the Middle East where women are mistreated and uh, gay people often put to death. So if you want freedom in the Middle East, this is where to go. Beautiful place, beautiful rocks and minerals there. This is from the uh, Solomon Mine. It's an Azurite with a Malachite. Um, they have certain gym and mineral stores in Israel that uh, are known for good quality and honesty and um, our pastor from Calvary Alpine um, and the group of pastors there took us to this as a pit stop in between some of our trips and I uh, picked this up for my wife already made but uh, real pretty real pretty piece of Psalm, uh, Solomon Mine Azurite. Here's another piece. Um, I did not make this one. I can't remember where we're at, but um, it was a special stone. Um, and there was some draw to it. And I ended up buying care of the 
rings, or not the rings, the uh, pennant and the earrings. She wanted the earrings too. She never wears them, but she really liked them the day we saw them. So that's real pretty. Can't remember there's something special about them, where they come from. I wish I could remember what the deal was. Something about mothers or something, I think. I can't remember. Here's another piece that I made. Um, you can see that's a nice piece of chrysophase. Real pretty piece. Um, it's not crystal clear. This one, I chose to take the square wire, wrap it around it. Um, what I did was I made a cabochon, and I had um, I did not have the edge come to a lip. I had it come kind of kind of down, and then I took a Dremel, and I literally ground out a little groove around the edge of the cabochon. And then uh, put that in there, and then I wrapped this wire around. There's no solder on this. Wrapped, wrapped, uh, swung the pieces around on the bezel, and then wrapped a real fine wire around the back. Tucked it in a few times. Put some uh, epoxy on there just to hold it in place. And there you have a really elegant. She wears this. She's worn this one quite a bit. My wife has. It looks really nice. Here's one we bought when we visited Hawaii a lot. And I bought this one. It's kind of cool. I wish I could get the camera to focus in now, but it just won't do it. But you see the shimmers in there. This is actually a tube filled with sapphires. And I looked all over to find one of these. And um, we have some family friends that live on Maui and own a jewelry shop. It was called Island Gold. It was right in uh, Lahaina. Wonderful people there. Actually, the COVID put them out of business. Um, it put so many people out of business. They just couldn't afford it anymore. Um all for they were there for I don't know 20 years something like that and uh, put out of business with so many other people put out of business in Hawaii Hawaii's really hurting a lot of people there are really hurting because of this uh, what's turned into political game with the COVID alright um, here's another piece this is a little piece of uh Australian fire opal with a lot of blue and green, not the reds that you usually see. The silver, which is totally needing to be polished, I got on Rio Grande. That was already formed, so all I had to do was grind the stone to fit in the space there, and then I put a little glue in the back, a little epoxy, and then push the edges around, and then polish, finish polishing it. It's a nice little piece of opal there. Um, what is this one? This is actually a jade. Real dark jade. That's a sterling silver setting. It's just filthy. Another one I got at Rio Grande. Um, you can see the epoxy in the back. I didn't want it to fall out. It didn't seem like it was going to be in there very good. Um, so I put a lot of epoxy on it. That's a real nice piece of jade. Um, Super dark. You can't really see it. The light's not showing up. It's almost like it's gotten darker. Here's just a little common um, gemstone I picked up. It was already carved, already polished. I just put it on this little finding. I could, Sometimes you go to uh, rock and mineral shows and you find, like, I found a bag of findings um, for nothing, you know, just a few bucks. So I bought it. And at first I thought, oh, they're all ugly, but, you know, they end up being kind of cute, kind of neat, make nice little gifts. Here's what I'm real proud of. That is a blue cat's eye tourmaline. These are getting extremely hard to find. Um, they're really going up in value. I actually did the silversmithing on this. Um, I made the bezel out of that uh, wire there. And um, 
soldered it to the little silver plate wrapped around a uh, piece of double half round and split it and then uh, put my cabochon in there isn't that a beauty blue cat's eye I got so I got a few of these um, from a friend of mine that goes into South America and able to get these at a really good price and I got this at an unbelievable price but yeah that is something you gotta love that all right this is another one I had a friend his name was Forrest Blood you've probably seen this one if you've watched my stuff that's natural that's a natural stone right there that's called uh, Starlight uh, he was from Maine. I think he got this out of Maine, he said, if I remember right. Um, I made this. I did the silver work on this. It has no back. It's a, it's a wire, and I put a lot of glue in there. You can see a lot of glue. I didn't want it to fall out. Um, the wire goes around, and then you, you push it in. Probably could have been pushed in a little better. And then I soldered. I did buy this um, bezel, and I just soldered that. I got it on Rio Grande. And I just soldered it on there. It's pretty dirty, but it's all stainless. Beautiful piece. Got the cross there. Actually, that one's so nice, it's got a cross within a cross. It's really nice. That's a super nice one. It's probably the best one I've seen. I've only got a few more. I got one that looks like an angel. Pretty cool. All right. Um, here's another piece that I actually set that. Uh, again, this piece of aquamarine, I have a friend who, uh, it's seven and a half carats, something like that. I have a friend who, uh, I used to see him all the time, and he went into Brazil, and he could get me these at a real good price. Um, so it's it's stainless, or it's uh, sterling silver. In hindsight, I wish I would have got gold. But white gold is a pain to work with if you scratch it because it's actually not white gold. It's a there's a coating, so you have to have you have to replate it with this white garbage, which is real slick like mercury. I don't even know what it's called. Um, I don't like it. I'm actually allergic to it. That white gold. But anyway, there's that. Um, I believe this is another aquamarine. I know I made that ring. Made that ring. Put those pieces right in the middle. And then soldered the um, top piece to it. Beautiful aquamarine that I set. I've set a few pieces. I'm not like, you know, not an expert at settings, but I can do it. This, even though it's tiny, this doesn't really look like much. Um, that's Alexandrite. This one does color changes. It goes from red to blue to green, depending on what kind of light it is. You can see like it almost looks blue right there. So if it's in the sunlight, it's one color. If it's in a shadow, it's another. If it's in a fluorescent, it's another. I did not set this one. Again, this was a gold setting here, white gold. I don't do white gold. Plus, um, alexandrite is like more, much, much rarer than diamonds. This is a stone you should invest in. If you can buy these loose... This is this is an investment right here. I think it's better than gold, um, in in some ways. So I went ahead and bought the finding, um, bought the ring for my friend, my connection, and um, had him, had a jeweler set it for me because I didn't want to. In fact, if you ever want a good jeweler, I know one in San Diego um, to get diamonds wholesale. So if you want to buy diamonds wholesale, I know a guy that he will get you a deal. Um, okay, He does it all, kind of on the side. He's kind of retired. So if you're in a big hurry. This 
is another from Hawaii. This is called a sunrise shell. In Hawaii, these were so uh, sought after and rare that the kings and royalty were the only ones that could wear them according to the stories I read on the sunrise shell. These can come in yellows and blues, multicolor, rainbow colors. Um, orange is probably the more common one. Um, this one has a hint of yellow. And um, you just can glue a bead inside of it and then you can run uh, a wire through it or a, a necklace through it so that you can wear it and have that feeling of Hawaii and the sun with you all year long. So something like this. <laughs> this one's not so bad because um, it's just one color. It's the more common color. But the bigger ones and the more colorful ones, the blue ones, the green one, the yellow, the multicolored ones, um, this one's like $100. <laughs> $100. Um, if it were rainbow colored, it'd probably be like $200. If it were... You know, like as big as two and a half of my fingers, it would probably be five hundred dollars. <laughs> so you can pay you can pay up to five hundred dollars for these for a really nice rainbow colored one, no problem. Sunrise shell, very collectible. If you're ever um, on Kauai, they find them on the beach sometimes. That would be a very very blessed day for you. Um. Here's one. This is kind of special. They're all special, I guess. My son and I went and hiked six miles in on a 100 plus degree day. It's got a fracture there. but um, So this piece what's called fortification. The Bible talks about fortified and fortification. Um, in history, fortification is something that has at least three sides on it. This three sides give you shelter. You can have shelter within this. Protection. Okay? Protection. Um, a lot of people, when they think of, of a fortress, they think of like the Trinity. Or they think of an uh, army outpost. It would have to have at least three sides on it. To be a fortress, otherwise, how could you, how could you have the walls around the fortress if there's only two, <laughs> or one? <laughs> it wouldn't be a fortress. Okay. So that's fortification out of Wiley Wells, six mile, in six mile. Or no, it was six miles. I think round trip actually, three miles in, three miles out, because um, they closed off all the roads. They closed off all the roads because of some Desert Protection Act. Um, so now that the only people that really go out there, elderly people, that used to go out there and just kick a rock or two and pick up trash and take it home with them, you know, if any dirt bikers left it there. And they would not leave that area open for travel. You had to go on foot. So now no older people are allowed to go there. They're being discriminated against basically in my opinion so these rocks are just sit out there and weather away and uh, like this one you see that fracture a few hundred years or a couple more freezes this would have popped in half and no longer been a fortification with that crack right there the water would seep in there and expand and shatter this to pieces making it um, fall apart and nobody would ever have been able to enjoy its beauty had I not have stumbled across it. Alright, um, this one here is a pewter belt buckle. I've had it for 30 years, maybe longer. Whoop, can't rotate your phone, sorry. My bad, not supposed to rotate the phone. This one I've had for, I don't know, I've had it at least 30 years. Maybe 30, maybe 35. So, um, you see the, the gold that's there? That's real gold. Um, I've glued some gold that I found on there. 
just used a epoxy and set the flakes in there. Um, kind of makes it look kind of cool. That'd be a great spot to pan if that were reality. <laughs> Here's a turquoise ring I made. Um, I used this uh, wire. This is one I made a long, long time ago. Um, this is from the Blue Sky Mine. It's a nugget. I did put hardener on it. Oops. Double half round for the band. Solder to a plate with the wire around it. Here it's a little loose. Need to tighten it up. Here is a nice piece of rose quartz. Just made a cabochon, wrapped some more of that wire around there. There's a little glue in there probably. Not too heavy on the glue. Took a piece of half round, soldered on there, pretty simple bezel. It needs polished, of course, like I told you all this stuff. Here is some uh earrings. These ones are just kind of a squeeze them on clamp. And then you've got some nice jade. They were supposed to go with this, this one. This one is, um, I think it's a Wyoming jade, and these are like a British Columbian jade. At, at one time, they were about the same color, but uh, this one's gotten darker for some reason. I don't know. It's darker than I thought it was. All right, let's see what we got here. We got a piece of uh, cat's eye on just a little cheap finding that I, like I said, I came across. Um, there's some holes in there. You could do more with that. You could put a wire through there and put some beads in there. It's kind of a cool little finding if you wanted to snazz it up a little bit. But, um, yeah, lim this is a lemon drop. Um, I, this is some other stuff I got from that buddy of mine in Maine a long time ago. Like, God, 35 years ago, and I cabbed it up. Um, this, I think it, they, he called it a ghost agate. Um, a guy out of Utah is mining this ghost agate, and uh, I was at a quartzite show. Um, I actually think Kara and I went to that. That was probably about seven years ago, maybe eight. So I slabbed it out, um, made this nice long cab. Um, my wife has a really nice long neck, and um, these long cabs look really great on a pennant. On her. She looks like Queen Elizabeth with these on her. <laughs> So yeah, this is just another twisted wire, twisted wire, and then tied with some silver at the top, wrapped in there, just a real basic bezel. This is one of the first ones I did like that, where I just took the Dremel, ground a little groove in the edge to put my wire to hold it in there, and that's it. Real, real simple way of doing a, a bezel for a pennant. Here's a little piece of rhodonite on um, another one of those findings. I just bought a bag of findings and put it on there. I'm not sure where this rhodonite's from. I don't think it's any special mine or anything. It's just something I got in a collection. This is um, rhodochrosite out of uh, Argentina. I bought a lot of this back uh, in the day. You can see the glue's kind of starting to turn color on the back there. I could uh, clean that up. Looks pretty dirty, huh? I should clean that up. Because if it flips over, it's going to look kind of nasty. So that could be sanded off. It's just kind of picked up uh, dirt and stuff over the years. So this is another one. My famous uh, grind the edge and um, put the twisted wire in there. You can tell I didn't grind that. I didn't, it's not perfectly straight, but it still works. 
You don't really notice it when you're looking at the front. So that almost concludes it. I've got a couple pieces of turquoise I wanted to share with you because um, I love turquoise. You guys, anybody who knows me knows I love turquoise, man. That's turquoise and real awesome agates are my weak spot. Look at that. What do you think of that? That's sweet. Raw, natural, untreated, unhardened, Kingman turquoise. This is the pick of the litter with the black webbing. This stuff they sell at the mine by the gram if you're lucky enough to get it. Um, they will, I've told the story before, they will mine like a trash dumpster full of turquoise, okay? A huge trash dumpster, right? Like the dumpsters behind uh, the grocery store. Out of that, they will get about a trash can, right? 50-gallon trash can, like what you the plastic ones that you pull to the curb um, that you buy at, at Home Depot to throw your leaves in or whatnot. Out of that... They get some pretty good turquoise. It's hard. Um, they probably don't have to treat it. They can sell it like it is. Maybe put a little hardener in it, you know. And then from that, they get like a baseball cap full of, or maybe a small shoebox full of the really, really good stuff. Super good stuff. Okay, if that, okay, little tiny bit out of that, and that's the stuff that you want to buy to make your jewelry out of. So my wife has a bunch of other pieces. I don't know where they're at. I couldn't find them. I was going to share them with you. I've, I've made her a really nice turquoise belt buckle, um, and I uh, made her a necklace, a really nice necklace out of this material right here. And uh, made a lot of pieces. There's some really good turquoise there. So, anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed me showing you some of the stuff I've worked on. I hope it inspires you um, to to clean your jewelry better, huh? <laughs> I made a green one of these. I have a green one of these somewhere that I made for my mother-in-law. That's real pretty. It's also a Tremoline cat's eye. God, I love that. So nice. So, anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed today's episode. Go down and check out RadicalRocks.com. Sign up for the newsletter there. I don't give your email address to anyone. I, In fact, I haven't even sent out any emails in the last month, so you're not going to get plagued with emails. I was intending to... Um, Send out an email when I do a, a live sell so that you would be notified. So if you want to be notified for the live sales, I sell the, when I do the live, it's like super deals, super good deals. So anyway, with that, remember, rock hounds don't die, they petrify. <laughs>